Let's talk about camera settings. Some of them are fundamental and apply to landscape as well as to wildlife photography and others are a bit more specific to bird photography. Let's start with your image quality. I capture images in RAW mode. I know that some photographers capture JPEGs along with RAW images, but I think that's a waste of pixels. Amateurs sometimes prefer to capture JPEGs because you know, they're easier to export, but I can do much more with a RAW image. It's really the equivalent of a digital negative, but it requires more work after the fact, so that's a little bit of a drawback. But for me, the default is RAW. Metering modes. My default is matrix, which means that the meter automatically kind of captures points throughout the viewfinder and then balances the exposure. For bird photography, some people prefer to use spot metering, especially when you use a long lens, but I prefer matrix throughout and then I'll adjust my exposure with exposure compensation if need be. And that's important to think about when you're looking at white birds. Sometimes you need to underexpose, sometimes you need to overexpose. It depends on the quality of light. How do you set your ISO? In the days of film, your ISO was governed by your film stock and you didn't have a lot of options. It was Kodachrome at 64 and then there was Ektachrome at 100 and sometimes you could use Ektachrome at 200 but these days the sky is the limit. The sensors in our cameras today are unbelievable. You can crank up the ISO all the way to 100,000 if you need be. It's a dizzying concept to wrap your head around. But how do you deal with that flexibility in your ISO settings? Well, most manufacturers have come up with an amazing tool called Auto ISO. For many years, I was used to setting my SLR camera in either aperture priority or in shutter speed priority, depending on whether I wanted to pay attention to the shutter release or to the aperture for technical or for creative controls. But now I apply auto sensitivity. And that means that with the two dials on my camera, I can simultaneously kind of change the aperture as well as the shutter speed. And the ISO becomes a floater. And that is the magic of the cameras that we have in our hands today. When I first heard about auto ISO, I was a little bit puzzled by it, but now I think it's one of the greatest functions on my camera. And we're gonna follow up on that as we are practicing with it in the field. White balance. My default is auto white balance. The meters are so good that they can adjust for different kinds of light. And if I need to make any adjustment, I do that after the fact in Lightroom. No need to fiddle with it while you're in the field. Let the camera do the heavy lifting that it is designed for and you focus on the creative controls where it matters. Release modes. In bird photography, you want to be prepared for action. So my default is continuous low release. I can shoot a couple of frames a second with this camera. When I want to get ready for real action, then it goes into continuous high. For portraits, when not much is changing, I switch it back to a single release because I don't want to waste too many frames that are nearly identical that give me more work after the fact when I have to edit the best frame. Image stabilizers. I mentioned that some mirrorless cameras have that built into the bodies, but in my DSLR it's relegated to the lenses. So it's on all the time as a default and I put it in sport mode because bird photography is very much like sport photography. A lot of action and it's unpredictable. Focus control. I started photographing birds back in the days when autofocus didn't exist. And when I think back, it's almost incomprehensible that I got any bird in flight sharp. These days it's so easy with the amazing capabilities of cameras and lenses to track birds in flight and to get them razor sharp as they fly into your viewfinder. But it can be a little bit bewildering to look at all the different autofocus settings. Let me cut to the chase. 
For bird photography, I prefer dynamic area AF. You might try 3D tracking with birds in flight against the blue sky. And we're going to talk more about those details when we're practicing in the field.